If you're a healthcare clinic or a small government agency, listen up. According to the Verizon 2023 Data Breach Investigation Report, more than 20% of security incidents reported involved government agencies and public administration. Almost one out of every four, or 25% of these incidents, involved ransomware. During the COVID-19 pandemic, high-profile ransomware attacks made international headlines. The world was shifting to remote work, and cybercriminals extracted huge payoffs from unprepared organizations. For example, Darkseid was pinpointed as the threat actor responsible for the Colonial Pipeline attack. This brought extreme pressure and scrutiny to the group. After this attack, one of the world's best-equipped national security organizations was on its tail, and the risk was simply no longer worth it. Attacks on small agencies and clinics are less obvious. When cybercriminals target big organizations, it makes global news and it becomes a national emergency. On the other hand, when cybercriminals target the public IT infrastructure of a small town with less than 30,000 residents, the story stops at the local level. This way, tens of thousands of these kinds of attacks can happen every year, the majority of which would go unreported. Instead of taking tens of millions of dollars from one large victim, cyber criminals can now take smaller amounts from a much larger number of small victims. The fewer the tools, the better. Companies in the cybercrime industry love ransomware as a service. Sometimes these groups ask for compensation through subscription payments made via cryptocurrency. Sometimes they demand a percentage of any earnings made using their software. Some may have more complex, alternative payment structures. A professional cybercrime syndicate targeting large victims can afford to pay out a decent percentage of its earnings to each partner it relied on to carry out the attack. The profit, usually in the millions, is split among participants and remains unnoticed. Less elaborate attacks are just as dangerous. In June 2023, a plastic surgeon in Los Angeles suffered a data breach. More than 70 patients had their private medical data compromised, and attackers threatened to publish it online if their demands were not met. The data included photographs of patients before and after their aesthetic operations, as well as financial data and medical records. Many of the clinic's patients were high-profile social media influencers and celebrities. The attackers carefully chose the target they knew would be most vulnerable to an extortion-based attack. This kind of attack makes adding a ransomware encryption layer redundant. The damage that cybercriminals are threatening to do is focused entirely on the people who entrusted the victims with the most sensitive and personal parts of their lives. No need for fancy ransomware. Use simple extortion when possible. How Attackers Steal Sensitive Data From Victims there are six ways to steal sensitive data. Automated exfiltration uses third-party software to steal data from the network. Traffic duplication sends sensitive data through compromised servers and devices using mirroring. Many devices support mirroring for activities like network traffic analysis. Data transfer size limits can export data to an external source in discrete packets of limited size. Scheduled transfers rely on scheduling data transfers at specific times, such as during normal business hours. Exfiltration over C2 channel is the simple transfer of data to an already established C2 channel. Exfiltration over other network media lets threat actors use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for data exfiltration. Organizations that strengthen their anti-data exfiltration capabilities are better equipped to block unauthorized transfers and keep their data safe from cyber extortionists. Find out more about how your organization can protect itself from opportunistic threat actors with ProDeft.